Welcome to this week's Dream Card Judging video here at BOTB. We'd now like to hand over to today's lawyer from Onside Law who'll oversee the proceedings. My name is Charlotte Houston from Onside Law and I'll be overseeing the judging this morning. Firstly, I can confirm that the competition data has already been sent to the auditing company, ASEX. I would now like today's judges to introduce themselves and using the secure link provided, mark on the screen where they think the centre of the ball should be. The group will then come to a final panel decision. Good morning, my name is Matt Cannon. I'm a senior county referee and footballer. Good morning, my name is Anna Goma. I'm an ex-professional football player, having played for Paris Saint-Germain, Newcastle and Fulham. Good morning, my name's Peter Giorgio and I'm a football and a futsal referee. My name is Liam Walsh. I'm a retired referee. I'm currently an FA Observer and head coach for the Middlesex Referees Academy. Good morning, my name's Andy Braithwaite and I'm a football referee, mentor and licensed observer. My name is Ari Mendonca. I've been involved in football for over 30 years, firstly as a player and then as a referee. Good morning, my name is Leo Donnellan. I'm an ex-professional football player, having been with Chelsea, Fulham and Leighton Orient. Good morning, my name is Hugh Gilroy. I'm a referee, mentor, tutor and observer. Hi, my name is Matthew Ray. I've affiliated in multiple counties across England and have refereed from grassroots through the professional academies. Hi, my name's Renee Hector and I play football for Watford FC Women and I'm a coach for Tottenham Hotspur Foundation. Judges, please now come to a final panel decision. For your reference, the larger white cross is the calculated average of the 10 individual selections. Thank you very much, Charlotte. Good morning, everybody. Morning, morning. Morning, morning, morning Matt. Matt. Morning, morning. So we, I think we've got three players in shot. I think the player in the really far background, I don't know whether he's a spectator or a, or a player, but I'll call it three players in shot. One in the background is blurred just on looking. And um, we have the two uh, players in the foreground challenging for the ball. The player in white, I think, is just looking across the ball and he's got his arm wrapped around the other player's arm to try and sort of pull him off. He's leaning back and looking up towards the ball. Um, so I will draw some lines. We've got a couple of really good eyes from this player in blue. Uh, and that's up through Alas there. And then below, it's all a big cluster with that's with Liam there, the last one. And then from this white player's eyes, we've got a really good eye here up through Rene. And then this one is slightly sort of, I'd say, half closed. And he's down here to the bottom through uh, Leo's. Um, so, Leo, I'll come to you first. There's your light blue cross. You're ever so slightly at the bottom of uh, uh, all our choices, which is a fairly tight cluster. Uh, and there you are highlighted. How did you see what was happening? Hi, Matt. Hi. Yeah, obviously, there's two, two players in shot. I think the player in blue is just uh, looking behind him. I think he's favourite to, to get to the ball. Um, I judged it mainly on his eye line, Matt. Uh, I think, obviously, we've got a good view with both eyes. So, he's sort of just looking a little bit in front of him, but to his left. Yeah. Uh, and I took the height of the ball from the other player, player's eyes. I believe he's looking directly across. Um, yeah, I don't really know what's happening with the ball. This, I think it sort of just appeared there. Maybe it's bounced up. Maybe they're just sort of, they're just reacting to where the ball is. So yeah, I mainly okay. went with the eye lines. Great. Thank you. And Peter, you're just ever slightly to the left of, uh, Leo's, do, have you seen this any differently or, or do you concur? I think concur. I, I think the player in, uh, in white is, is trying to prevent the player in blue getting to the ball or trying to challenge better for the ball by tugging him back. Uh, and I, like Leo said, you've got two great sets of eyes and I just thought it was closer to the, uh, to, to the player in blue. Um, uh, and then using the player in white rather than it looking further up, I thought it was more horizontal, and that's where I placed the center of the ball. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and Rennie, there's you, uh, light pink. I'll come to you next because you're at the opposite side of the cluster and, and the highest. Uh, there you are, magnified. H how did you see the challenge and what was happening? Uh, yeah, I still feel like <laughs> player in blue is favorite to get the ball. 
Um, judging by his body position, I'm assuming it's it's maybe like a ball over the top and he's he's trying to judge it coming over his shoulder um, and running onto the ball. Um, I mainly went with the height because I feel like it's still got a little bit of distance to go just because the player in blue still looks relatively um, relaxed. Um, and also the player in white, I feel like he is looking um, ever so slightly up, but his, his facial expression is, is um, his eye, especially his left eye, it, it looks a little bit glazed. So I felt like the player in blue, his, his eyes were um, more reliable um, to go by. Um, but that's what I, I feel like it's happening. But I feel like it's just got a little bit uh, more distance um, to go. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, and Ala, uh, good morning. You're just here <laughs> in the in the uh, dark green, ever so slightly to the left left of the cluster. There you are, magnified. Uh, have you seen this any differently? Yeah, no. We've got the, the, these two these two players challenging for the ball. I think the player in white is uh, slightly late late on the challenge, so he's, he's grabbing the arm of his opponent. Um, I think you know the ball is slightly in the foreground, closer. Um, to the play in blue, uh, who's the favorite, I think, to, to play it. Um, yeah, I think it's looking quite uh, quite steeply. Uh, so it's looking up, you know, diagonally. Uh, and the player, so I cross-reference with the player in white, who's looking, you know, slightly above uh, horizontal. But uh, as I said, I think, you know, the play in blue is, uh, is still favorite for the, you know, to play this ball. Yeah, great. Thank you very much indeed. Um, so we're getting into the into the main cluster group, Matthew. <clears throat> excuse me, you're there. The lime green cross. Uh, there you are, magnified, um, and there you are with a magnifier over the top. H how did you see this? Yeah, it is. It is tricky to judge where the ball is. I, I, I probably went similar to Rene, thinking it was a ball over the top, and the player in blue is trying to run onto it. Um, but to be honest, I've I've gone mainly with the eye lines here, and I think the player in white. Um, is looking above the horizontal, particularly his right eye. I think uh, centre of his eye is just above centre. Um, so that's that's probably given me the height and that the trajectory from the blue players is is in line with what everyone else thinks, to be honest. Yeah, great. Thank you. And Ari, you're just to the right of uh, Matthews there. Yours, your purple cross uh, on the same sort of trajectory up from the player in white. Um, have you seen this differently at all or...? or... Or ha what do you think is happening in the shot? Uh, well, I I have exactly the same assessment as as um, as Matthew. Uh, I felt that the player in white is just looking slightly above horizontal, and and we have a very good set of eyes on the player in blue. Uh, I follow. Is uh, is for me is is clear the favorite uh, uh, to get to this ball. Is 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 not concerned with the player in white, although the player in white we can see that he's grabbing, so he knows. Uh, his, his self-assessment, he, he clearly saw that, oh, I'm not going to win this one and uh, let me try to prevent him to, to comfort, comfortably uh, get to, the, to, to this one. Uh, and then I, ju I, ju I just drew the, the eye lines and decided that the center should be there. Great, thank you. Uh, and again, you're just uh, sort of on the, just to the right and there, but slightly below uh, Liam. There you are, your blue cross. Um, I'll put the magnifier over the top of the cross. Um, how did you see what was happening? Yeah, thanks, Matt. Um, much same as my colleagues. That one thing I did use was with the white player was the fact I felt his head leaning slightly backwards due to and you could see the amount of neck that you can see. So that that is why I've got that little bit of elevation to the ball and not a horizontal look. Um, so I combined that uh, with obviously the pitch that I felt that the the blue player was looking at the ball um, again like uh, has been mentioned I felt he was clear favourite to win the ball I just felt it was like a, a bouncing ball um, and that the white player was there purely trying to just put him off he had no chance of winning it um, and yeah yeah great thing. about it yeah thank you um, Andy you're here uh, with the orange cross in the middle of this sort of main cluster um, how did you see what was happening I'll just magnify yours there. Thanks, Matt. Uh, realistically, following on from uh, what Liam just said there regarding the guy on the right-hand side in white, um, also as well, his his forehead is wrinkled, so which gave me just, again, slightly above horizontal. I just feel that his eye line is just looking at slightly a little mm -hmm. bit sharper. Uh, the guy in blue, um, as, as everybody's alluded, 
is looking very, very clear. We see two clear eyes um, and the ball is quite close to him. And I, yes, I feel he is favourite to, to get the ball, whether it's a bouncing ball or over the top, but the ball is literally just there. And um, uh, just crossing the two eye lines brings me to that position. Yeah, great. Thank you. Uh, and lastly, Hugh, uh, there you are, your pink cross. You're just sort of next to my own, just below it there, magnified. How did you see this? Yeah, I agree with um, Rene, Matt and Ari that I think it's, it's coming over his shoulder and probably going to run onto it just based on the fact that the player in white holding his arm back, um, but also I don't think the blue players kind of challenge him for the ball. I think he's just focused on it to see where it's going to drop. Um, but yeah, as everyone said, I think he's got clearly got two eyes looking up towards the top right of the image. And then for me, the player in white was just just looking almost horizontal um, from his position and where those met. I was happy with that. Yeah, thank you very much. So we, uh, we've got a, a fairly tight cluster. If I put it over this calculated average, we can just see Alain's popping out to the left and uh, Rene's at the top. Um, and we've got a sort of a split opinion and really between whether it's the bouncing ball that's been mentioned sort of three or four times and whether the ball is popping over the shoulder. Um, so it would make sense either way because of the way the body positions are and the players. Um, so what I'd like to do is to have a vote uh, on both Alain and Rene's separately. Um, a lot of you have said that the eye line that you've thought is sort of more horizontal. Uh, and, and if I highlight Rene's up here, um, it is really above the majority of our choices. So what I'd like to do is for now to remove Rene so you can see what happens to the, this, this calculated average, which drops down and brings Alan slightly into it. Um, I'll also do the same for Alan so we, you can see prior to the vote what happens. It just drops into the middle of the main cluster there. And again, very similar to Alan's, just pops out the top on the right-hand side. So it's really, uh, for, for my uh, thought, whether Rene's puts the, the average a little bit higher than it should be. Um, obviously, it just moves it a little bit, but I think it's quite important to just move it enough pixels. Uh, and again, from what you've said, as a majority that I've heard as a panel, you thought this guy in white was looking more horizontally. Uh, so uh, as again, uh, Rene, you won't get to vote on this one. Um, and the nine of us will um, vote to get a, an unequal figure. So I think it's personally better that Rene's is removed. Well, it does take it a little bit away from my own, um, but not enough for me to be worried about it. And I think it does put it in a much uh, thinner view line up from the player in white. So Alain, uh, if I could have your vote if possible. Uh, yeah, no, I think the, the player in white is looking, you know, uh, you know slightly above horizontally, but you know, not, not that high. So, therefore, I would vote without René. Thank you. Uh, Peter? Uh, yes, with, without René. Thank you. Uh, Liam? Hey, tough one. I, uh, I'm going to apologise to René, and I'm going to say uh, to remove, please, because it brings it down, the average down, right onto the line of my cross. Great. Thank you. Andy? With the magnifier over it, I find it feasible, so I'd leave Renee in. Thank you. Uh, Ari? I would leave uh, Renee in because it, it, it would, uh, the, the average would move closer to my, my cross as well. Thank you. Hugh? Um, just based on where I think the player in white's looking, I'd remove it. Thank you. Uh, and lastly, Matthew? I would keep Rene in. I think the white players is looking that bit higher. Okay, thank you. So that, that's quite a, a substantial vote, seven to two, to remove Rene's. Um, so there we have uh, the calculated average. And as I said, Alain's is still popping out a little bit to the left. Um, and let's see how that moves the average. Um, so if we remove Alain's, it obviously drops further back in and we have... Uh, four below and four above, that's with you and mine, uh, pretty much next to each other. Um, so it's a very subtle change, this. Um, and, you know, please do, and I'm doing this because it's popping out and we've got a very tight cluster uh, and it does move a few pixels. 
Um, I will move our lands there. I will, I will have to say that, that, in my opinion, because it brings it closer to my cross, uh, that I would prefer uh, our lands to be removed as well. Um, so again, Ala, you won't have a vote on this. Uh, next, Peter. I would like to have our lands cross in because yep. it just brings it closer uh, to, <clears throat> to, to the left where our cross is. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Rene? I would remove our lands. Out. Okay. Thank you. Um, Liam? I would, uh, as as I voted previously, I would vote to remove due to the fact it moves the average closer to my cross. Thank you. Andy? I would remove it. Okay, thank you. Ari? Uh, I would remove as well. Okay, thank you. Leo? I would remove it, Lane. Thank you. Uh, Hugh? Um, I'd leave in based on what I thought was feasible. Yeah, thank you. And lastly, Matthew? I would leave Alan in too. Okay, fine. Well, thank you. After another second vote, uh, we've decided to, as a, as a panel, to remove Alan's as well um, and judge at this new calculated average. And as I said, uh, there we have it. Everyone's choice is within the magnifier. It's a very tight call, this. Um, but I think with the four cl clear eyes that we've got, especially this one player in white, I think it justifies the extra uh, judging. And we've got four above and four below, um, which I think is quite a good split. Um, so, Charlotte, we've agreed to, after two panel uh, votes, to judge with both Alain and Rene's uh, choices removed. Thanks very much, judges. If you are all happy, please could you click Submit. Thank you, judges. The coordinates selected are 1919 and 1750. These coordinates will now be passed to the auditing company Azets to calculate the winner of the competition and they will then inform BOTV. That concludes the judging process. Thank you.